my mom would just have us do art around the table and we were like reading the scriptures or she'd tell us to dry them and cutting off all the arms of the like heroes from the Book of Mormon doing things like fighting the Lamanites but she didn't know how to tr tell us how to do art so we would just just we would just draw you know Well, my mom, uh, she wanted to be an artist when she was uh, when she was a little girl. She wanted to be an artist. That's all she wanted to do. And she was doing did a drawing, and her teacher told her that it was a bad drawing and that she wouldn't be a good artist. And so she kind of she believed him and stopped doing art. She never did art again. And in a, in a weird way, it was like the best thing she could do for her kids that, that happened to her for her kids because it told her what not to do when she had a family. sharpen my pencil this way is because my first semester back from my mission I had one of the most influential teachers of my life uh, Peter Everett he, he wouldn't allow he made a he gave us a rule in class that we couldn't sharpen our pencils that we had to sharpen our pencils by hand and he, he talked about the sensitivity you gain with uh, just sharpening a pencil it's like if you've ever learned a foreign language and you hear someone conjugate something wrong, when you see someone shove a pencil in a pencil sharpener, it's just like it makes your ears hurt. My abstract paintings are really meditative and um, almost uh, repetitive and systematic and um, and. Uh, I did a whole big body of abstract paintings of lines and and I needed a break from just kind of the controlled system of of unpredictability and um, so I just decided I, I was just kind of burned out on my abstract painting I decided I'd go to my studio and there was no pressure because I'd finished my BFA show and I just went down into my studio turned on music and I tried to just draw anything like I was a little kid, just just scribble and have fun. And um, and then a, a painting that came out of that that first one, uh, it was just it just worked. some scribbles just to like loosen me up and and sometimes like I'm really nervous because I don't know if this painting will, will even turn out but there has to be an, a point of where you don't care sometimes to get something good and, and now I 
in the idea of trying to get away from my abstract system, sometimes by default I start doing a system of little cities. <laughs> I remember in high school, I, I dropped out of AP art because I wanted to meet girls in choir. The choir's fun because there's a lot of girls in there. Actually, my mom and dad met in choir, so maybe subconsciously I was, I thought, you know, you meet good girls in choir, but I always have this romantic feeling that if, if I can draw a pretty picture that uh, that maybe a girl will like me, and it's it's ridiculous. My mom. Uh, I, I see her as this like cool woman who who wanted us to draw pictures of monsters and and she wanted us to write poems and so I guess I associate her with a woman who's faithful but really values art. This song is too happy and I should probably make it sad. This song is too happy and I will probably make it sad. Every time I try to make it sad, it just is happy. But every time I try to make it sad, it just is happy. Happy song. I'm getting ready for the show, and I keep making these little like paintings of monsters. And I'm like, this is Park City doesn't want paintings of monsters. You know what I mean? But I just can't stop. No. But, but the thing is, is, if you were sitting down doing paintings that you thought they wanted in Park City, they wouldn't be good paintings. Yeah. 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 You have to do what it is you have to do. Yeah. And it, the hope is to then find who it is that needs that too. But every time I try to make it sad, it just stays happy, happy, happy song. I'd like to write a sad song Cause this song is too happy And I will probably make it sad